Okay, so um, we have uh, we have the, the founder of our of our seminar, Roman Kosak, on automorphisms, Janssen models, and satisfaction classes. Uh, calling back to a paper from from uh, a couple decades ago that I'm really yeah, that was a very fun read and it's very interesting stuff. So I'm I'm really excited for this. Welcome, Roman. Okay, thank you, Th thank you, Atar, and, and uh, thank you all for uh, tuning in. Um, this is a talk that uh, it's a part of it. I know some of you may remember that uh, in, in the fall, I, was, uh, I gave a series of three talks, some kind of an overview of certain problems and results uh, in basic model theory of PA. And at the end, my intention was also to give a talk on open problems, but since I already talked, you know, it took longer than I, than I estimated. Um, I thought that you know, three talks were just enough for the fall. So this is a little bit of a leftover, something that I wanted to talk about then. And I will talk about now. And as Atar said, um, oh, oh, let me see what's happening now. Okay, it's moving. Good. You know, so so this is this uh, not, not just two decades; it's quarter of a century ago. I I published this paper, uh, which I like. Uh, that um, th there were certain problems that I was working on then, and I couldn't solve them. And also, uh, people I worked with: uh, Henry Kotarski, Richard K, Jim. I don't know if Jim's there. Uh, I discussed those problems with, with them and they couldn't solve them either. And at the end, I, I had a chance to talk to Shala about some of them and he couldn't solve them either. So, <laughs> so, so that was strange because he, he was really interested. But at the end, he said that, well, you know, they seem specific to, to PA and uh, that, that the techniques that he was uh, sort of in command of and of, of which there were many uh, wouldn't just work. So. Then I decided to write the, this, this paper when I would just describe the problems and, and give some partial results and the problems are open then yes. and, and they are still open now. So, so there, are three, uh, there are three sections in that, in that paper uh, listed here, defining undefinability, weekly Johnson models, three cuts and absolutely non-extendable automorphisms. And in the past, I talked about uh, one and three at various seminars. Here, but somehow there was never really enough talk, uh, time to talk about two and four. So I decided that I will I will just spend an hour talking about those two two, two sections and uh, what's in them, and uh, to give some kind of an overview of what these problems are about. So um, let me go ahead. And so there will be two parts, and this one will be extending automorphism automorphisms of recursively saturated uh, countable recursively saturated modes of PA. We know much about them and we know much about their automorphism groups. And um, so, so for this part one, uh, we can just fix one countable recursively saturated model. It doesn't really matter which one we pick because everything will work the same. Uh, and uh, I will refer to M and to its um, elementary uh, initial segments. And so the important part of it is that uh, for each elementary initial segment. Sure, uh, uh, sorry to interrupt. I'm not sure whether the other people have also the same effect, but when you uh, like mark this fragment, it actually uh, it actually got obscured, like terribly obscured. Yep, same here. Well, I, I couldn't hear. So what did you say? Same here. When you highlight something, it just covers it up. Oh, I see. So this could be really a sort of, you know, maybe suspense here. I will, I will. So you, okay. So, so I will not be highlighting. Well, somebody, somebody did it recently. Oh, last, last week, uh, Zach was doing this from, from Australia and it worked fine. Right, but he's not you. Okay, this is <laughs> happening to you. I know, I know. Okay, so I will, I will desist. Okay, so I will not be highlighting. I'll be sort of hovering my mouse over parts that I'm talking about. Do you see something happening? It's still covered up. It, it's covered up. The, the, I think there was a K there that's an, uh, that's oh. an initial segment of M. That's, that K is covered up. Oh, I, well, I, I moved everything from my screen. Anyways, I will not be, I will not be highlighting anything else. Anyway, okay. so this says that K is an elementary initial segment of M. And uh, so what, what, what uh, an important isomorphism invariant for the pair M and K is the family of coded subsets. So this notation is COD M slash K, and it's the family of uh, intersections with, and this actually, it's bad typo. This M, I should cover it. This M is supposed to be K. 
Okay, so these are the traces on K of sets which are definable in M. Okay, just think of this as being the, the initial segment. So, so these are some early results about, about uh, how to extend automorphism from K to M. And uh, later on, you know, the, the assumptions will be, I'll be talking about K, I'll be using uh, the term tall initial segments. And if K is an elementary initial segment and it's tall, this is actually an isomorphic copy of M inside. So it's also regards to be saturated. So this is, these are the results of, you can, you can read them both ways, either the results about extending automorphisms of initial segments to the whole model, or you can start with an recursively saturated model K that's isomorphic to M and look for an end extension to, to which uh, that is also recursively saturated to which a given automorphism of K extends. So here's the situation that with a mild assumption, this is a mild assumption that says that if K is not an infimum of a coded uh, downward cofinal initial segment with K. You know, so this is an, so A codes a sequence, it's an omega sequence that, who, the, whose infimum is K. Those, those are very special cases, interesting cases, and those are excluded, but with one exclusion here, if I have any automorphism of K, then uh, it can be extended to an automorphism of the, of the ground model M, uh, if and only if, this F uh, just permutes coded sets. It sends coded sets to coded sets and it's inverse code sends coded sets to coded sets. So this is a very good description. It essentially says that all you need to know is how F uh, you know, behaves with respect to this family of coded sets. And, um, and in fact, this extra assumption here highlighted in red is necessary. This is uh, in my paper with Hendrik from something like in 1986 or 1987, uh, where we where we show that this is a and that uh, this is a true uh, obstacle here. But there are well, what, what, what probably I need to say that M has continued many tall initial segments that are not of this form, and there are only you know exceptional cases, countably many of cuts that looks like that. So so with minor with minor exclusion, this, this theorem characterizes those automorphisms that extend to, to uh, elementary extensions. Okay, so, so in particular, uh, there is this situation where, you know, so, so let, let me just go back quickly. So once you know what this automorphism group looks like, then you also know you can, you can define an automorphism group of automorphism subgroup of the automorphism group of K consisting of those automorphisms that extend to a given M. And this is the same as the automorphism group, you know, it's isomorphic to the automorphism group of this, um, of this second order structure. Then, so in particular, uh, there is this extreme situation where, uh, so this is in our also old paper on minimal satisfaction classes with Jim, uh, that there are tall elementary initial segments of M such that this, this structure is rigid. So there are no non-trivial automorphisms. So it means uh, if you make an extension, if you think of starting with a model K and you uh, produce an elementary end extension like that, with, uh, with this in mind, with this property, then you have killed all the automorphisms of K. None except for identity extends to M. So this is an extreme situation, but this is an interesting, this is an interesting case. Interesting things are happening because now if you, but it was one, this was one of the reasons to prove something like that, is that if you iterate now, you start with a given countable model N, and if you iterate, uh, you, you produce an omega one chain of element, continuous omega one chain of elementary and extensions with this property, then you end up with a rigid uh, omega one like model that is still regards to the saturated. So this is in a stark contrast uh, with the countable case, every countable model, regards to the saturated model has continuum, uh, many automorphisms, but you have one here that actually we have many that are rigid. So, so this was an interesting example to look at. And this also, I will say a little bit more about the proof of this theorem and uh, also uh, uh, some other applications of it, of it later. And by the way, no, I, 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 I'm using this full screen mode, so I don't see anybody and I don't see any chat or anything. I just see my screen. Uh, if you feel like say, saying something, please do. Uh, this will this will help me to know that that someone is still listening. Okay, and I don't really have much to say. So so if there is anything that you would like me to explain more, I will I will gladly do that.
I have a question, actually, Roman. Uh huh. Um, if I fix an M, I mean, since since M, if it's a countable recursive saturated model, I mean, it has lots and lots of automorphisms. So, like in the first theorem we've written there, you can find a K, um, so that you know none of these automorphisms of K extend. Um, but mm -hmm. is there always <clears throat> An initial segment, uh, you know, is there always a K that's not just M so that you can extend automorphisms? I mean, can the opposite situation always happen also? Uh, so this will be, this is exactly, will, this will be commented on, on, the, on the coming slides. You'll see. Okay, so, so it's, it's okay. a complicated situation. The answer is yes, and we know much more about it. So, so this one, the rigid, the rigid case is a, is, a, is a rather extreme, and there are all kinds of cases in between. But also, what is also true, there will be always an automorphism that does not extend. So it's not like that you can extend them all. Uh, okay, so, so, but, so this is, but this is the question uh, that I was asking in this four problems paper, that you can, you can say that it's uh, about an automorphism that is extendable. Now looking from M upward, you are start with this countable model M. Are you looking? I'm looking at its automorphisms. Um, so I call it extendable if it can be extended to some regards to desaturated element and extension. And the question is: Is every automorphism of M extendable? Is are there some very exotic, weird uh, automorphisms that cannot be extended at all? Okay? But maybe they all are. So I'm not asking about extending all automorphisms to, a, to a, an end extension because this can never happen. I'm asking the opposite extreme. I'm asking, can there be are there some strange automorphisms of M that no matter what, well, you cannot extend them to any elementary end extension. So, so, so we know something, uh, you know, so in each of those sections in that paper with problems, uh, there are some partial results, partial answers, and somehow they all, uh, uh, refer to uh, uh, inductive satisfaction classes. So, you know, this is the old terminology these days, you know, we talk, uh, you know, you've, you've, you've listened to many talks here by, by Mateusz and by, and by Bartosz, and uh, I think Ali was also mentioning this, that uh, we talk about truth predicates and uh, various hierarchy of truth predicates on non-standard models of PA, but old, old terminology we, we, we just talked uh, okay, here's another typo. This S is uh, supposed to be a subset of M, you know, this M that we fixed up before. And it's a partial inductive satisfaction class. So inductive means that the expanded structure is a model of PE star, so induction axioms hold. And S satisfies uh, Tarski's conditions for satisfaction up to some non-standard, the formulas of the size up to some non-standard C, or you can assume that up to some non-standard complexity sigma c. It's partial. So it's not a fully inductive satisfaction class. It's partial, but it covers some non-standard formulas up to some level c. Okay, so there is a simple proposition, and it's not difficult to prove, that if um, uh, you are given an automorphism uh, that fixes some partial inductive satisfaction class, that this one can be extended. So this is some kind of simple test that um, it's not even on the if, but um, if, if, uh, if uh, F is an automorphism of the extended structure, M together with the satisfaction class, then those uh, can be extended. And I think I uh, want to show you a proof of it. Okay, so is the statement clear? Um, so um, is this point-wise fixing? Oh, no, 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 uh, so it's set-wise. I mean, set so you know, I really mean that F but by this, I mean that if I say f of s equals x, it doesn't mean point-wise, it, mm -hmm. uh, it means set-wise. Mm -hmm. So in other words, it means that f is an automorphism of the, of the pair, m together with the satisfaction relation. Thanks. If you do this, then does it follow that you have to fix everything? Or you, I guess you permute everything below c, is that true? Not necessarily. No, I can actually fix c. No, 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 I know, but I mean, you can't send something from below C above C and also fix this S, right? Is that? Right, right. Mm, no, no, that's right. If I stretch, well, uh, well, not necessarily. Uh, oh, no, but it's probably. No, I think probably it means, it, well, I, I guess let, let's assume that we fix C. 
then you can you can move lots and lots of things below C, right? Because if you if you uh, if you don't want to move C. Right. Okay. Thanks. Isn't C definable from S, so it would have to be fixed for that reason? Uh, that's uh, well. It's like the, the you know <laughs> longest like depth of a formula that you can. Oh no, but oh, but I'm not saying that C is the largest. I can always take a smaller C. Ah, oh, okay, I see. It, it can be any. S has some weird stuff above C, maybe also that's not. Right, 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 right. Right. So 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 C can be any element. So I can I can move C up and down as long as it's non-standard. Okay, so so here's a simple proof because the, the proof really uh, uses so kind of a very uh, standard machinery of uh, conservative extensions, or in other words, definable types. Because you um, so you start with this uh, pair, the model and its satisfaction class, and it's a model of PA star. And every countable model of P star, and actually every model of P star in the countable language has conservative elementary and extensions. And simple means uh, as an extension that's generated by a single element over the ground model. So in other words, I have this elementary extension that whose elements are values of scholem terms and the scholem terms are uh, in the language of PA together with the satisfaction class. And every element is the value of a term on some element B from the ground model and this generating element A. So I have this uh, nice representation of, of all elements of the model. And then conservativity gives me, uh, well, it's equivalent to definability of the type of each element. Uh, that means that if I want to check if in the extension, something is true about an element B from M and the generator, this can be, this is already decided in a definable way in the ground model. So for every formula phi, there is some formula sigma that makes decisions about which formulas go into the type of this element and which formulas um, go outside. And once you have that, it's uh, straightforward to check that if you define your function as, you know, so your, your automorphism operates on M, and if you send one of those elements of N of the form T B A, and you just switch to what the automorphism does to B, this is an automorphism of the extension. Okay, so it's a it's a simple proof uh, using using standard techniques. So so that's uh, already. So if I'm looking for an automorphism that uh, that will not extend, that it means I have to find one that will somehow mess up every possible partial inductive satisfaction. Uh, Roman, I but this is not an easy task. Yeah, yeah. Hi there, yeah. Roman. Um, Hi there. I, don't, the, I, don't, the, I don't see you, but I hear yeah. you. I know who you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, your definition of extendable, it, as far as I remember it, um, it, it specify it restricted to recursively. You know, the extension has to be recursively right. saturated. Right. Right. I'm so, not sure that this one you produced is, and I'm not oh, sure no, why. No, it is. No, is it that is. just to maintain no, it, it, good it behavior? No, 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 no. This is this is a this is a salient point here because this is an elementary extension of the pair. R to be a partial inductive satisfaction class is first order. So if S is a partial inductive satisfaction on M, S prime will be a partial inductive satisfaction class for N. And those models oh, okay. in inductive satisfaction classes are regards to the rated. So that right. So this is an important point too, that automatically no the pair n s prime will not be saturated, but n itself will be. So that works. And uh, the other half of my question is why is is, is a restriction to recursively saturated just because it's too messy otherwise? Uh, right, because otherwise there are some simple answers. You can kill, you know, for example, every model in the countable model has an, a rigid uh, elementary end extension. And you know, that's, so I'm not, well, so maybe the answer is really here that what I'm really interested in in this situation from the very beginning, that I fix M and I'm looking at the initial segments and I'm looking at those that are regardless saturated. This is the interesting case, much is happening here. And I want to know what is happening in, in this particular case. So M is regards to be saturated and K is regards to be saturated as well. One could define this extendability for other, in other situations, but then maybe it's messy or maybe it's too simple. 
there, there are all kinds of examples you can come up with what extends and what does not extend. Thanks. Okay. All right, look, so now, and now we have examples that, uh, that if M happens to be arithmetically saturated, I forgot to add the definition for those of you who don't know or do not remember. M is arithmetically saturated if the standard system of M is uh, a model of AC is zero, if the standard system of M is closed under arithmetic comprehension. Not every standard system is closed under arithmetic comprehension. They're all Scott sets. But if the standard system of M is closed under uh, arithmetic comprehension, that we call them arithmetically saturated. Uh, and arithmetically saturated models have model theoretic properties strikingly different from general properties. They are, they are sort of, well, sort of th this, this notion of saturation is a much stronger notion of saturation as it turns out. So, uh, so if M is uh, regardless saturated, then there are many automorphisms that move every uh, partial inductive satisfaction class. So they do not satisfy the assumptions of my, of my proposition before. So about those automorphisms, uh, I do not know whether they can be extended or not, okay? Because every one of those will move some, actually will move every in partial inductive satisfaction class. And here is a simple proof. Um, so, but it's based on some old result from, you know, the KKK was, it's an old paper from, I think 1991, if I remember well, uh, and this stands for myself, Kotlarski and K, K, myself and Kotlarski. And among many other things, we proved there that uh, a model is arithmetically saturated if and only if every finitely generated submodel of M uh, is a fixed point set of some automorphism. Uh, this uh, is Ali there. Ali, are you there? Ali was... Yes, yes, I am here. I was just muted. Uh, good. No, because I'm just about to say that then this was uh, very, very beautifully uh, generalized. Ali proved a beautiful theorem. Um, uh, proving a conjecture of Jim that actually this is much more general. If a model is arithmetically saturated, there are automorphisms whose fixed point sets um, um, are, you know, can be of any isomorphism type. So you start with an ele any elementary submodel of M, and if uh, you can find uh, perhaps another, you can find an automorphism whose fixed point set is isomorphic to that to that submodel that you that you uh, specified. And so in particular, you know, because we want examples of elementary submodelers that are not recursively saturated. So this K uh, here is not recursively saturated. This is a simple extension of the minimal model. They don't, those are never recursively saturated. So uh, now, and we have this automorphism whose fixed point set is K. This is, and so, so this is the set of uh, points fixed by F. So now if uh, F is an automorphism of the extended, of expanded structure, then um, we look at the, uh, you know, the whole point is that the fixed point set of an automorphism, so here there will be also a fixed point set of the automorphism of this structure is an elementary submodel. And because A is non-standard, uh, the fixed point set uh, will be non-standard as well. And again, by elementarity, this S prime, and again, this is, uh, this, this should be, you know, uh, uh, I was rushing here with my notes. Th this should be S. <laughs> so, so we're looking at the intersection with the fixed point set of the satisfaction relation on M, and that's S prime. So this is an elementary submodel. So S was a partial inductive satisfaction class, so, so, is, so is S prime. So K is regardless saturated, but that's a contradiction because it's not. So there cannot be such an automorphism. So, so, so in, in other words, uh, this, uh, this automorphism has to, has to do something to that satisfaction class. It cannot leave it fixed. Okay, is the proof clear? Again, I, I think this is a simple, simple argument showing that something interesting is happening here. And uh, so one of the questions is that I have this assumption here about M being arithmetically saturated. And what about the models that we now just we now call just recursively saturated, and it is models which are recursively saturated but not arithmetically saturated. And the problem there, I, this argument cannot be improved or uh, repeated in some version, because in this case, 
this is a st stark distinction between model theory of arithmetically saturated models and and just regardless be saturated and in arithmetically saturated case there are lots and lots of different isomorphism types of fixed point sets of automorphisms but in just regardless be saturated case there is just one or fixed point sets are isomorphic to m so they are all regardless be saturated so this argument cannot be cannot be repeated okay okay something certainly not Oh, now something strange. I was afraid that something like this was about to happen. Oh, now it moves again. All right. So this is, Corey was asking uh, about, you know, what, what, what do we know in general when they have just some initial segment of M and when can we extend automorphisms uh, and, and uh, how many? And so this is something I, I proved up again sometime in the 1990s that, uh, that if you, if you take a look, uh, if you consider any countable linearly ordered set and you look at its group of automorphisms, then for this G, I can, you know, remember M is a fixed recursively saturated model of PA. For this G, I can find an elementary initial segment, tall one, so isomorphic to M, such that the group of those automorphisms of K that extends to M is isomorphic to G. So it shows that there is a, enormous variety of situations from you know uh, the i can start with a group uh, it's just a trivial group and i get rigid uh, models uh, or i can start with countable groups like or these are, these are groups of ordered uh, structures so they they except for trivial uh, they never can never be finite but they can be countable they can be uncountable anything that comes to mind and uh, then you then you can always extend them to uh, you, you you can find uh, a cut that somehow represents this group in terms of those automorphisms that extends to M. So there's a large variety of, of those subgroups. And here's the lemma. And again, the proof is not, you know, I, I, I just use standard arguments, uh, Geifman's minimal types and minimal satisfaction classes. I will take say say more about them uh, later. Uh, and the key lemma here is uh, has something to do with satisfaction classes. That if I start with this uh, linearly ordered set, I can uh, find a partial inductive satisfaction class such that this the automorphisms of the expanded structure, together with the satisfaction class, is isomorphic to the the automorphism group. So you know again the extreme case is when. Uh, this uh, automorphism group is trivial. If there are no automorphisms, I get a rigid structure um, and I can get countable uh, automorphism groups. And again, they are represented by the expansions, uh, the automorphism of the expansions uh, of my model, or they can be large uh, groups of size continuum. And again, it works fine. But as I said, this, is, this requires some you know, machinery here but most of the machinery was, uh, was invented by Hype Geifman uh, in the 70s in this big paper on models and types of uh, arithmetic. So I just apply those techniques and you can prove that. And you know, this is, this is what I need to, to state another problem today, but I should mention that uh, Jim in 2002 published this wonderful paper where, you know, there is just this, looks like a small improvement uh, here I produce those, those automorphism groups are automorphism groups of countable linear early order sets. But Jim improves this to say, well, let's G be an automorphism group of countable linear early order structure. So these groups also can be characterized as closed subgroups of automorphism groups of linear early order structures. But Jim's proof goes well, well beyond uh, standard techniques. It's actually a wonderful theorem and much goes there in terms of combinatorics and uh, that, that, that is used uh, to, to prove the results. So this is, it is actually a much stronger, much stronger theorem and much stronger result. So it says that any, any you know, we're talking about order structures anyway. So my, my results here are about linear ordered sets, but here it says that you can use just a single recursively saturated model of PA to somehow uh, represent uh, uh, the, the automorphism group of any Countable linearly ordered structure. They somehow all live there, and and Jim's uh, Jim's proof is just to show how it's how it's done. 
but it's a very nice but difficult theorem. So look, so so this so this is a question that was not in the in the paper, the four problems paper, but I think this is interesting, and I don't really remember if anyone has considered it. I certainly I haven't. And so now the situation again going back. So this is all motivated by this variety of subgroups and and what can be which automorphisms can be extended to a given uh, element and extensions and which cannot. And you can see that much can happen. But now, if you just want to take a look at it from a naive point of view, suppose that, that I just give you two automorphisms f and g, and you don't you know you don't know which subgroups they belong to or anything like that. I just give you an f and a g, and you want to say, well, uh, when can I find an accountable recursive set with element and extension n to which f, f extends and g does not? Okay, in particular, it would, I think if you could answer a question like this, maybe this would help to answer the original question, whether there is an F that cannot be extended at all. So then, then I would not need a G, I would just have some information about how badly F behaves, so it cannot be extended to any, to any elementary end extension. That is recursively saturated, but this is a more general question that I want to extend F, but at the same time block G from being extended. So it's completely open, and I don't know if anyone has any uh, has done any work on it. Um, so let, let me see. Um, are there are there any questions? Nope. Okay, because this was part one, so now I am moving to part two. So part two is about weekly Johnson models. Uh, this uh, so this is something that I defined, but um, maybe there is there was no need for that. Let's let, let, let's see. So so what, what are Jonsson models? And this is a general model theoretic uh, notion that a model is Jonsson if it has no elementary submodels of the same cardinality as the model. So if uh, so, in other words, if you have an elementary extension and if you're told that the uh, not extension, you have an elementary submodel of M and the cardinality of K is the same cardinality of M, that K must be equal to M. There are no, there are no large elementary submodels, and you, those Jonsson models exist in uncountable cardinalities, in abundance. And this is a theorem of Julian Knight uh, from some old paper, I think from 1970s. I actually couldn't find, I was looking for this paper now, but I couldn't find it. So I cannot give you a precise uh, reference but Jonsson models of PA exist. And there is a proof of this in uh, my book with Jim, this is theorem 2112, but um, it has um, an, a, a very elegant proof. I'm not quite sure how different that proof is from, from uh, Julian Knight's proof, but Jim proved a very nice uh, lemma uh, that allows to give a, an elegant proof of, you know, elegant, elegant construction of, of a Jonsson model of PA. And this is going through what is called now super minimal elementary end extensions. So, and, and Jim's lemma says, or Jim's theorem says that every counter model of PA has a super minimal elementary end extension. And that is an extension such that if you take any element of the extension that's not in the ground model, then the whole model is already this column closure of, of, of the element. So it's this sort of kind of, regardless of how large M things to be, you know, M can be recursively desaturated, large model with lots and lots of elementary submodels, but I can always construct a mid, an extension, and it's an end extension, it's elementary, such that every element in the, in the extension generates the whole model already. And so now, if you apply this theorem uh, to a countable, you start with a countable model and any countable model of PA, and construct a continuous omega one chain of super minimal elementary and extensions. It is Jonsson, and it's very easy to see that it's Jonsson. And in particular, it has this property that if you take any two elements in it, uh, if they are different, uh, okay, uh, I again, this is this, <laughs> there is a not necessarily a typo, this is something I, I, I oh, this is a typo, this in, in, but I neglected to say that A is not B. If A is not B, then the type of A is different from the type of B. Every, every two elements, there are, no, there are no two elements realizing the same type. 
and this is a this is actually the property that Julia and I built into her construction. This was her point to, to construct a model like that as well. So, so this, uh, this Jonsson model of PA uh, realizes uh, Aleph, uh, omega, uh, Aleph 1, uh, many different types. And th there is nothing here about model being regardless to be saturated. This is just Jonsson models of, of PA. Okay, so, so this is a question, again, this was not asked in the, in the, in the old paper with problems, but I think this is an interesting question to consider. Well, so here is this one construction, and it seems like this is essentially a construction that one should use, but it produces a model that realizes uh, uh, uncountably many types. So could, could there be a Jonsson model that realizes a very few types? And uh, so a good case to look at are regardless saturated models, because regardless saturated models of any cardinality, but with the uh, countable standard system, they only realize uh, countably many types, complete types, because they, they only realize complete types that are coded in the standard system. So it doesn't matter how large the model is, uh, the number of types is bounded by the size of the, of the standard system. So, and there are many interesting constructions. I just, you know, I will talk a, a, a bit later. Uh, there is Kaufman's model, uh, the rather classless models and all kinds of other variations of rather classless models. Uh, and various constructions of them. So maybe we could, we could find one a model that would answer the question here. But unfortunately, uh, no recurs to be saturated model of PA or even PA star uh, can be on. So I, I just want to show you why is that the case. Before I do that, any questions about the definitions and what I'm trying to do? Because the next slide is a, is a quick proof of this proposition here. Uh, Roman, I just wanted to point out uh, the uh, because you, you mentioned uh, Julian Knight's paper mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, in 1976 in the Journal of Symbolic Logic, and and the proof that she has for the construction of the superminimal uses uh, model theoretic forcing, so it's quite different. Uh -huh. from oh, I see. Book, yeah. Right. Right. So I think I've seen that paper, but I just <laughs> couldn't see the, the connection. <laughs> Well, you know, and Jim, so just going back, so this is what Ali is, is, is saying that this, this is Jim's construction of, for the super minimal element checks, and she's actually very elegant. This is, this is just models of PA, and, um, you, 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 and you, do, you do some counting arguments uh, that works nicely. Okay, so, so here's the argument for uh, that, that no recursively desaturated model of PA can be Janssen, uh, and that is because if uh, Every, every recursively desaturated model um, realizes uh, infinitely many independent minimal types. So I will not explain what minimal types are, but those are minimal types of uh, that uh, Heim Geifmann defined in his 1976 paper on models and types of, of PA. We also call them sometimes indiscernible types. Indiscernibility is a very important property of these minimal types. They're unbounded indiscernible types. And that means that uh, in every model, the collection of elements that realize the type is an, is an indiscernible sequence. So, and two types are independent. Uh, again, the, 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 you can give a more general definition, but if you have two types real of element, complete types of two elements realized in, in, in a model M, then they are independent. If no element in this column closure of A realizes the type of B, and no element in this column closure of B realizes the type of A. And so we know that uh, every recursive desaturated model realizes countably many independent minimal types of the construction that, that builds in infinitely many types, but the recursive basis for infinitely many independent minimal types. And so if I take two of those uh, such types, and if, they, if P is the uh, set of elements realizing uh, QP in my, in my model M, then uh, I take uh, uh, this column closure of P. So, and uh,
Right. So, so now this, this knot here requires a short proof. That there are as many elements of, of the model realizing P as the as the cardinality of the model. And then uh, so I have an elementary submodel of the same cardinality as M. It's you know, it's it's certainly you know, if I have a model of size, you know, if it's omega one like model of kappa like model. Uh, then, then it's obvious if it's if a model is not kappa-like, it requires an argument. But uh, but then this is an example of elementary submodel which is not isomorphic to M, which is not equal to M, because it's not recursively saturated, and because it uh, just realizes one minimal type. Every recursive saturated model realizes many. And this one, again, this follows from the property of minimal types that whatever is generated, the only element, well, the only minimal types that realize in the in this column closure of, of P is this type P. There is no other, other minimal type there. Okay, so, so here is a construction. So, so those recursively saturated models are never Janssen, but uh, we can ask us a, a sort of a weaker question, and this is the question from this, this paper from 1995 that I asked. Well, I, I define something, this notion of something that's weakly on some, and it applies to recursively saturated models. So I call a recursively saturated weakly on some if it doesn't have elementary submodels which are recursively saturated of the same cardinality. Uh, and again, look, I'm I'm this is embarrassing. I was I was fixing my slides this morning, and maybe I, this was too late to fix it. Th th this should say not isomorphic, but equal. Okay, so this is a Johnson property. Sorry about that. I'll have to fix my slides here. Uh, so this is the Johnson property, but with the restriction that uh, I'm looking at recursively saturated. I'm looking at some models that are already somewhat large. Okay, so if I have an elementary, some model and it's already large in two senses. It's, it's large in the sense that it has cardinality the same as M, but it's also large because it's also recursively saturated. You, I didn't lose recursive saturation by going from model to its elementary submodel, and I want those models not to exist. I want them all to be equal to M. So, so the question is: so this is the open question from this from this old paper. Uh, are there recursively saturated weakly on some models of PA? And again, for a partial result, there is a there is a connection, there is a connection to uh, uh, inductive satisfaction classes. That uh, models having partial inductive satisfaction classes are not weakly answer. And I give this proof uh, in uh, uh, in the paper, but it's a much longer proof. Uh, and it's I, I was thinking of of repeating it here. It uses some nice. Uh, techniques that I learned from Henry Kotlarski, uh, something that one can call non-standard model theory. You, you use model theoretic notion together with a non-standard satisfaction class. You talk about non-standard column closures and you do various overspills and you prove the results. And if you'd like to take a look, it's in the paper. It's a nice, elegant, not very long proof, but uses these nice techniques. But, the, but this proof is, is shorter that if, uh, M has a partial inductive satisfaction class, and then by making it shorter, if necessary, we can assume that the pair is recursively saturated as well. So by the previous proposition, well, uh, you know, so the pair being recursively saturated is not Johnson. So it has an elementary submodel, a proper elementary submodel of the same cardinality. But because again, you know, this model K has an inductive satisfaction class, it is recursively saturated. So the original model uh, couldn't have been uh, weakly also. Okay, because oh, it's a proof that you know every every model that has a satisfaction class has a proper elementary submodel that is of the same cardinality, but it's also recursively saturated. So the result follows. Okay, so so <laughs> I th there is something there is a kind of a, a even weaker question. Uh, okay, because uh, so so this is a version of Jonsenness. 
that we can also, I could, I could call it weekly, weekly on some models. And, um, and there are models like that. And I want to show you how, they, how they're produced. So there is a recursively saturated model of PA, it, which has this sort of very weak Janssen property that if I, if I have a, a elementary uh, submodel of M, and if it's isomorphic to M, that it must be equal to M. It doesn't have, doesn't have uh, isomorphic copy that are smaller than the model. So, so K is of the same cardinality as M. K is also recursively saturated, but on top of it, it's also isomorphic to M. And under these, those assumptions, uh, then K must be equal to M. And we have, we have models uh, like that. So this is a note to myself that, you know, it's, it's, it's a simple construction. I want to say a little bit more about how these models are constructed, but instead of right, typing everything on slides, I wanted to show it to you on the whiteboard. So, so think, think if you have if some questions, uh, maybe I went over thing, uh, everything a little bit too quickly. I have to connect my, my tablets to write something. Okay, so, so, so what I wanted to do is, you know, how to construct this weekly, weekly on some model. So this is a very weak construction of, 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 of a model that has some, um, had some uh, weak Janssen property, but the point is this. So, so we start with, with a model M and a partial inductive satisfaction class. So this is the model of the A star and S is minima. So, so one way of saying this that MS is pointwise definable. Every countable, so M is M where is the model of PA and is countable and is recursively saturated. And this is from, from an old paper uh, with Jim that we proved that we call them minimal satisfaction classes and we showed that every recursively desaturated model has such, uh, actually has continued many uh, such minimal satisfaction classes. So you start with one and then we use this um, uh, construction that uh, you can just start with. Uh, so this will be, you know, so MS will be is M0 is zero. And then you construct this chain where you take M alpha as alpha and you produce a conservative minimal extension uh, m alpha plus one as alpha plus one and uh, minimal using the fact that these are models of p star so and so this is all very standard and then you take this model n that's the union of all those uh, M alphas, where alpha is below omega one. And now it follows that, um, it follows that N, so N is recursively desaturated and the union, so N actually is equipped with, I have this N and also I have this union of all the S alphas. This is M, uh, the model of P star. So, so this is an inductive satisfaction class on N, but N is recursively desaturated anyway, because it's a union of a chain of recursively desaturated models, but it also has this inductive satisfaction class. On is just a union of those satisfaction classes, but then there is a proposition that N has no non-trivial embeddings. into itself. Okay, and so this is another way of saying that there is no, so, so in other words, there is no 
elementary submodel of M that's isomorphic to M proper. Okay, so this is so this is an example that this is an example of a uh, of uh, a model that uh, has this weak 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 Janssen property. And again, this example, it seems to be coming with a satisfaction class that somehow, whatever question I seem to be asking, uh, it seems to be difficult to answer, except that when you assume that there are satisfaction classes around and then you apply some standard techniques and you produce one. But, um, but here it's not really quite the case. Okay, but, but I can also, but uh, the construction Uh, can be combined uh, with that of Kaufman. So, well, well, what I mean is this: that instead of instead of doing what I was doing here, just a straightforward continuous chain of elementary and extension, I can start with splitting first omega one into two disjoint stationary sets. And on one stationary set, I can do this construction here that will guarantee, and that will guarantee at the end that there will be no non-trivial embeddings of the model into itself. But on the other stationary set, I will do Kaufman construction that unfortunately uh, requires diamonds. So I would assume diamond and uh, and uh, then, but I will keep constructing it using diamond and to make sure that the model is rather classless. So in particular, it will not have, uh, it will not have no cell. Okay, so, okay, so what, this is what I said, can be added to obtain a rather classless. And with no proper elementary, some model such n. This is n. Such that k is isomorphic to n. Okay, can, so I quick, can I ask a quick question, Roman? Sure, sure. Uh, this diamond use, this can be eliminated by the same Shala method that eliminates Kaufman's diamond? Well, I think you would know that. You, you wrote that. You wrote uh, I do not know that. <laughs> no, be, no, 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 because, no, because uh, it, this elimination really uh, uh, refers to the kind of statements that you prove with diamond, and this is really the statement of the same kind. So this is by okay. the general semantic syntactic form of the statement uh, that you know. That I think diamond elimination applies, but um, but I would have to check. I I don't know offhand. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, but uh, but but, you know, but at least you know this is this kind of weak uh, weak, uh, weak weak form of. Uh, of Jonsenness, but original questions, all, all original questions still stand. So, so look, so I, I, I see that, you know, I said that I don't really have that much time, uh, that, that much material, and maybe I talked a little bit too quickly. So uh, I have many questions, but maybe you also have some questions I would gladly answer. And I just wanted to, to, to finish with, with a short story that I was giving a talk about this, about Kaufman model. And also in similar constructions to my colleagues at Bronx Community College. And I sort of, I didn't think much about the title, but the title of my talk was, was how to use diamond to build a large uh, rigid ring. Yeah, I thought it was a kind of a, you know, the, many of our colleagues there are algebraist and they the ring theory. So, so I thought they would be, they would be interested in the question like this. And I got this kind of enthusiastic email from, from a colleague from the history department who specializes uh, in history of science and just, no, this is fantastic. This is so exciting, you know, but I'm sorry, I have to, I, I, I will have to miss your talk. 
So I was quite, I, so I said, okay, interesting. He's, he, he got excited. And I didn't realize why he was so excited. But when you look at the title and if you, if you, if you are not a set theorist, you will get very excited. You know, that's, but so it's a good thing that he didn't come to the talk. So. It's a great title. <laughs> All right, look, so, so this, is, this is all essentially all I wanted to say. Okay, let's thank Roman. And uh, let's open the floor for questions. Actually, I have a question about this very last comment, uh, Roman, you made about this um, title of yours about rigid rings. Um, so, um, so what is for, for the, I, I imagine you use a model of arithmetic to do this. Uh, and I'm wondering how do algebraists usually build ri rigid rings? Do you know from that? Do you remember from your talk? Well, no, right, right, look, look, so, so, so this is really the construction. Yeah. Uh, and at that time I, you know, this is, and because I wasn't using the, uh, satisfaction classes, uh, there are other ways to kill. Uh, no, this construction allows you to, to prove this non-embeddability. If you just wanted to do something that's rigid, it's enough to know that you can kill one automorphism at a time. And I uh -huh. showed how to kill one automorphism at a time. And this is, you know, this is the old lemma by Kaufman. And then you use diamond. So this is a very elegant thing to, to, with, with a diamond added on top. And, uh, but I do not know how they make those rigid rings and they didn't have any comments. Uh, that uh, they were interested, but uh, I, I didn't get any, any any feedback for that. But I understand there is also a very general result of Shala that says under what conditions uh, theories have rigid uh, uncountable models. And this is something quite general. So perhaps the arithmetic case also is, is covered by, by Shalak's theorem, but I don't really know what, remember what the theorem says. Okay. Thank you. I have a question about this construction you just sketched mm -hmm. here that we're looking at. And so you can weave this Kaufman thing into it. So you can make a Jonsson Kaufman model. But right. what if what if I was kind of lazy and I just made a normal Kaufman model and then at the end I changed my mind and wished that it was Jonsson? Do you know whether you get it for free or I mean do you have to do this extra work to make it Jonsson or uh, this is a good question. No, this is I I I was you know you can always well, all those questions that I've been asking, well, this and similar, you can always ask, well, is Kaufman's model like that? But there are many non-isomorphic Kaufmans. So, so you, could, you, you should choose the right one. And uh, I don't know. So, so this is a good question. So, so I, I needed to, to build this extra thing, you know, uh, to get one. But if you just look, so, so for example, this one is a Kaufman model, <laughs> but it might be, uh, you know, there must be a whole spectrum of Kaufmanns, and some may be Jonsson, and some may be not. I mean, is it clear that there even is one non-Jonsson Kaufman model? I mean, could it just be a theorem that every Kaufman model is Jonsson, or is no, this... no, 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 no. They are all recursively saturated, so none of them is Jonsson, but they could be. Oh, sorry, I mean, you know, uh, weekly, weekly Jonsson. Oh, Excuse me. Yeah. Oh no, a oh, weekly, weekly. That that's perhaps no. That's that's open. That's open. Okay. Thank you. But but look but 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 perhaps uh, no that's right though so because the argument the argument that you used, used for non Jonsonness was using satisfaction classes I had to start with to, to produce a submodel that you know some witnesses some non Jonsonness uh, I need a satisfaction class and if I don't have it I mean for Kaufman model I don't uh, it becomes an, an, a more difficult question. I see. Okay. Thank you. In general, but, but another question that I, I do know the answer to, that there is an interesting class of models which do not have satisfaction in classes, but are not Kaufman. So there are models that have undefinable uh, classes, but they do not have partial inductive satisfaction classes. So maybe there is some kind of intermediate class in between that also share one of those Jonsson as properties, either at one end or at the other. This would be another question to ask. That's very interesting. Ken, I see you. Ken, yes? Yeah, yeah, I have a 
It's sort of a vague question. Um, recursive saturation comes up again and again and again. There's one moment where you talk about arithmetic uh, saturation, and mm -hmm. that gives you a little more. Uh, a little, it gives KKK a little more. Um, uh, but um, the, the class of recursive you know, functions is, is very hard to decompose. And, um, or it's never really been decomposed successfully. I mean, there are fragments of it like epsilon zero recursive, gamma zero recursive. Uh, are there any theorems or lemmas out there which don't require all of recursive saturation, but just depend on a piece of it? Uh, well, so I have a non-answer to your question. Ah, oh, good. And, and because what really happens here is that if you're in a model of PA, we say recursively saturated, recursively saturated, uh, but they are always much more than recursively saturated. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, if it's standard system of M saturated. So it means two things that all complete types realized in the model are in the standard system and every type coded in the standard, every, every consistent type coded in the standard system is realized. So, and in fact, in, you know, and this is, well, regardless of saturations come up, comes up over and over and over again. And that is because this is the class of structures that we want to study. Mm. So the question never comes up, oh, let's look at some weaker notion of, of, of saturation. Let's see what happens because there is already so much to look at in this very specific case. But also we always have much more than the recursive saturation. You know, this, this standard system has lots and lots of non-computable sets in it. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it, it, you know, it satisfies weak Koenig's lemma. So we are very far away from sort of trying to reduce types to some simpler types. We actually go the other direction. We make it stronger and stronger, but like, you know, so, so arithmetic saturation means that if you look at this, uh, the model uh, of second order arithmetic, uh, that's ACA zero. And then we, we sort of, we go, so we, uh, what happens when you make this stronger? And there have been some attempts to do that. So, so you go in this direction, but going weaker from the, you know, but all, all models have at least that much saturation, WK is zero. Mm -hmm. So, so in, in terms of your question, it might be something interesting to consider, but in this context, it hasn't been because we have always at least that much. Ah, very interesting. Thank you. Roman, uh, isn't it true that uh, every, we can also write, um, in, going in the opposite direction, um, every recursive type can be redescribed using Craig's trick as a primitive recursive one? So if we no, have- that's, No, that's what I mean, but, but you know, what's, what's, what's misleading here that it's not really recursive saturation we're talking about because for free, we're getting much stronger saturation. And, but, and, that's happen, but that happens to be a theorem, meaning if right. I just tell you that I have a primitive recursively saturated model of arithmetic, mm -hmm. then you could right. prove, the, prove right. a theorem right. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that answers um, uh, Ken's question that, that, yeah. that at least for recursive saturation, primitive recursive saturation, and probably even p time recursive saturation, polynomial time is, is sufficient to do to get exactly what Roman said to get mm -hmm. standard system well, saturation. Right. Yeah, no, ah, most right. interesting. Right, but the Craig's uh, the Craig's theorem it just depends right on that pleonasm trick. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. not deep, deep. I mean, no, it's, no. It's yeah, yeah. It's just the uh, yeah, yeah. Right. No, no. But, but my, the gist of my answer was was rather this that in this whole theory of of countable recursively saturated models, very rarely you worry about types being uh, being uh, recursive. Uh, but you know, any, <laughs> yes. Any, any type you write is, but, but you, you take advantage of the fact there are lots and lots of non-recursive types mm -hmm. that you can you can assume that, are, that, that, that because they are coded. Mm -hmm. So, so you, you can use complete types of elements realized in the in the structure, and that's how arithmetic saturation is also defined with respect to this. Arithmetic saturation is not just saturation with arithmetic types; it's much more than that. Ah, it's ah. saturation with respect to the types which are arithmetic, which types which are already realized. It's a, it's a closure property. So again, mm -hmm. it goes, it goes, 
So there are models which are saturated with respect to all arithmetic types, but are not arithmetically saturated. You need the closure property. Ah. This is a super strong notion. And then it's, and it turns out that model theoretically allows you to do all kinds of things that you cannot, cannot possibly do with just, uh, with just uh, reversing saturation. Ah. It somehow reflects the difference between WKL0 and ACA0. Nice. Uh, Roman, I, I had a question on, on, on sort of something completely different. So if, you, if there's more discussion on this, I'll, I'll, I'll hold off. But uh, I actually had a small comment about this. If you uh, go ahead, I mean, maybe this is the answer is no. But has is there any use if you go stronger than ACA dot here to like you know ATR dot or pi one one CA or something? Well, look so. There is, it's, it's, it's a good question. And uh, there was some hope that uh, there, there would, because there are open questions about, for example, you know, what's happening with some, some things about automorphism groups and generic automorphism and existence of certain kinds of automorphism. So uh, Richard Kay and uh, Lawrence, Tin Lok Wang, they looked into it. And also uh, Frederick Engstrom, this was his PhD thesis. They come, came up with the notion of transplendent model. There was somehow a model is trans it's, a, it's, a, it's a combination of, of saturation and omitting types kind of arguments. This was based on this construction of, of, a, of, a, of, a, of an autoworking that moves all undefinable elements. So on one hand, you use resplendence to, to, to show that there is an automorphism with certain properties, but at the same time, you want to use omitting types for that automorphism to say that it's sort of that the only elements it fixes are the definable ones. And they came up with this idea that there is a certain notion of transplendence uh, that, that does, does the work. And, and for that, they needed something like very strong fragment of Z2. It jumps all the way up. But then no, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, they wrote, I think, two papers on it. And I thought it was very nice and elegant, but it didn't have any applications. So, so we didn't go far with it. So, so the uh, on that note, there was, so one of those papers did talk about sort of um, full comprehension. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so um, they, they define this, the structure uh, is sort of fully, fully satisfied, uh, fully uh, saturated if it's recursively saturated and um, its standard system when you allow omega as a predicate is the same as this regular standard system. Uh, and that turned out to be equivalent to um, full comprehension, the full comprehension axiom. Uh, really, the, 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 that was a really interesting series of papers. Uh, um, but okay, yeah, no, and nothing. I haven't seen any any developments on that beyond that. But, right. I, I think they sh they shouldn't be forgotten, and maybe one day some applications will come up. Yeah, uh, it's always in the back of my head of when can I apply a transcendence argument, and I've never what? been able to find one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And uh, apparently, yeah. transcendence is a transplendence is a word in English. Oh, well, now it is. No, no, no. It has been apparently. Oh. You, you can look it up. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember it from Shakespeare. <laughs> Maybe not the Queen's English. <laughs> Deep enough, I'm sure that it will be there. <laughs> um, Roman, so I had a question. Uh, you you had this definition of weakly Janssen with a typo, um, and then my question is if if that typo is actually even is is meaningful. So in, in a sense, um, so you said uh, uh, it, so the actual definition of weakly Janssen is if if it's uh, uh, if if you have a submodel of the same uh, elementary submodel of the same cardinality, then it must be the same model. Uh, have you is this other definition where if you have an uh, elementary submodel of the same cardinality, then it's isomorphic. Uh, so right. it, no, sort of no, M I, is isomorphic to no, all of its, no, everything no. else of the same. This might, might be actually for two it was typo because I, I used isomorphism. This was like, you know, I used it for weekly, weekly on some, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but perhaps one could consider it anyway, not just in the case of regards to desaturated models. Mm -hmm. uh, has, has this been looked at at all? Well, the, maybe Ali remembers, maybe Jim remembers. Uh, Risser had papers. There was some, some, you know, when and I give it in the countable case. What is this class of models that are always isomorphic to, 
uh, they, they always uh, have an isomorphic copy uh, as an elementary submodel. And this, I think it's very close to recursive saturation or with some sort it's a, of- It's a kind of like categoricity uh, or sort of for the structure or something like that, for, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right, right. But, but, but then there was this sort of, in going in the other direction, it's sort of like anti-Yonson, which is so when, now under what assumptions, you know, in, in a class of models, you always have an isomorphic copy, because this is what happens for, for recursive saturated models, models of PA, they have lots and lots of isomorphic copies of themselves inside. These are all those self-embedding theorems with uh, elementarity added in. So maybe, Ali, maybe, have you looked at it? Um, actually, yeah, if, let, let, me, let me make sure if I understand correctly uh, what, what Atta is asking. I have to go to the typo. Maybe I can find the typo. Okay. Because there is a notion, uh, I think I remember about 20 some years ago, I gave a talk actually at uh, the CUNY seminar about what I called selfish structures. These are uh -huh. basically structures that are isomorphic to every submodel of themselves of the, same, of the same cardinality. And so, so for example, the, at any, um, if you look at any cardinal, uh, with this usual ordering or reverse of that cardinal, um, reverse the ordering, it has this property. So omega and omega star, for example, have this property. And if a structure is Janssen, if it doesn't have any substructures of the same cardinality as itself, then it's automatically selfish. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. so uh, I, as I recall, um, for arithmetic, okay, so if you start with a uh, kind of a model of arithmetic and uh, and just iterate the minimal construction, uh, the minimal type construction omega one times, then um, you would get a model with this property. So there are selfish models of cardinality out of one, but it won't be recursively saturated. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, Look, so, so, so I, I think this is, uh, maybe you should could make a list of these questions properly. And I'm, I'm looking now at you know, my typo. This is not, I didn't remember the typo well. It actually says something different than I thought it did. And it could be an interesting question. I don't, Ali, so, so I don't think anything like that has been considered. So this is kind of like the recursively saturated version of what Ali is saying. Right. Yeah, uh -huh. uh, recursively saturated selfish right. model. Right. So, yeah. uh, a weakly selfish, I guess we would call it. <laughs> right. Right, if you, yeah, we could. And you just said that in your cases, they were not recursively saturated. Right, and, and I remember, I think this came up, um, I think it was a conversation either with you or with Jim, and I think this is about at least 20 years ago where the observation was that by iterating uh, a minimal type out of one times, you get such a model mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that is isomorphic okay. to, to every substructure of itself of the same cardinality. That, that's right, that's right. Yeah. I think so. Um, and if there's a way of playing with it to make it recursively, sat I never thought about the recursive saturation case, but it's, the fact that such models exist in every cardinality, uh, or every uncountable cardinality, is already quite interesting mm -hmm. for, for mm -hmm. PA. Mm -hmm. Wait, sorry. The, I mean, this, what's written in this typo here, it's slightly weaker than this. No, I mean, that's a misunderstanding other than the recursive saturation, because you're only, you only care about the ones that are elementary submodels, right? Not just every substructure. Right? So does it make a difference? I mean, right, I th no, I think actually, yeah. There seems to be this conflation for the notion of Janssen-ness. Uh, the, the definition that uh, Roman gave for Janssen was using elementary submodels, but usually one sees just a submodel. So one way of uh, making the definitions match is to, uh, to insist that your model of PA is equipped with definable scolding functions. Then, then the two notions agree. And I think, so, so somehow morally, they're, they're the same question, but technically they're not. I see. Okay. Thanks. Hmm. Oh, I see. So, so this. Uh, so, well, so it means I was con on my life I was confused about what Janssen meant. Yeah, because yeah. Janssen groups are, you know, for example, pe people who worry about Janssen structures, you know, well, um, right. there's, no there's no elementarity involved. There's no elementarity. Yeah. Right. Right. Oh, no, I, I, I see. Right. But in in case of arithmetic, I think that if we, if you forget about elementarity, there are all kinds of things you can do. Yes. Yes. It just becomes a different game. Yeah. A different game. Yeah, okay, look, so, you know, so I'm, I'm happy we have the, the discussion uh, because that was my point that I think that some of those questions, you know, they're all still open and there are variants of them that might be considered 
uh, but might be worth considering again, especially that we have some new techniques and we have new, some new theorems around. And I was particularly interested in applications of, of uh, satisfaction classes. And now we know more about satisfaction classes and some variants of them. But also, I, I, I thought that uh, there is nothing for these questions then I, that, that tells the difference between arithmetically saturated case and just regards to be saturated. And maybe, uh, maybe there is one and uh, it would be interesting. To, to see if there is. Roman, would you be able to um, share your slides? Because it looks like you didn't manage to go through all of it, right? Oh, no, no, no. The point is that I did go through all of it because I, the, the last part I really wanted to do by hand. Oh, I see. Okay. I, I just for some reason thought that you just didn't no, get no, to no, some, no, some no. of the slides. This was the design, actually. I, I, okay, very I really, miss the, I, I really miss the, the blackboards times when we have- Yes, we, we all do. <laughs> I would actually write something on, the, on, on something, so. so. But I'll be happy to share the slides, but I have to fix the. But this was a fortuitous typo, but maybe something will come out of it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Serendipity. Yeah. Yes. If you do fix the slides, you should either leave that in or make a note of it or something because it's interesting. I, I can ask another question. I can define some other sort of weekly on some. <laughs> Barely, <Okay>. Johnson. <laughs> okay, other questions? I just wanted to uh, just make a quick correction. I. Uh, the, the paper of Julia Robinson that I referred to uh, is actually called Hanf numbers for particular theories, not omitting types. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just had a chance to quickly look at it while- uh, Julia Knight. <laughs> Julia Knight, yeah, yeah. Did I, well, I'm sorry, what did I say? Julia Robinson. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, sorry. Uh, Julia Knight, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I just recently actually watched a movie about Julia Robinson. Maybe that's what happened. Um, so the, the construction that Julia uh, Knight gives about, of, 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 of the superminimal model of arithmetic, um, as I mentioned, uses omitting types. And it's actually, it's, it's an argument that, as she points out, also works for uh, models of zermelo frankel set theory with a global choice function. And it's, it's, it's very different from the, the construction that, that Jim has given of a super minimal one. And, I, and what the, Jim's construction is far more perspicuous and you could see exactly what's happening. And I think you, Julia Knights appears to me at least from years ago reading it as rather mysterious. So it would be uh, interesting to see maybe uh, really what's happening in that forcing proof. But, but Hanf was the most brilliant of all the Berkeley graduates. He got a job in Hawaii. <laughs> and Cameron ended up there. I don't know where is Cameron these days. I'm still there for about two more months. Okay. Was the most brilliant of the CUNY graduates. <laughs> I don't think you can say that when, you know, two more brilliant <laughs> ones are in this room. <laughs> I know, no, but 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 Ken. Oh, no, sorry, three more. I miscounted. But I don't know if Ken realized that Jim is a Berkeley graduate as well. Four more. Okay, I think we should uh we should thank Roman again. That was great, and the discussion after was just as valuable as it was. All right, so thank Roman. you, Roman. Thanks, Roman. And look, so, and I just, a short announcement. So we have two more MOPAs scheduled. Uh, and uh, so uh, uh, Andres Cordon Franco from Sevilla will, will speak about model theory of fragments, but not weak fragments, but the truth fragments, I sigma n and such, and define the boot elements and models of I sigma n. So that's next week at two. And then Dave, Dave Marker is speaking uh, on the 27th uh, about, uh, Omega one light models of PA and uh, real close fields. And beyond that, we don't have anything scheduled. So if anyone would like to give a talk or if anyone knows of anyone who would like to give a talk, let us know. And uh, we have plenty of room to schedule other talks later.